All right, geometry scholars, today we're going to do the basic instructions for the unit on triangle centers with a Mira. This is actually called the Mira. It's not my funky accent. I used to teach with a guy from Kenya, and uh, kids thought he was trying to say Mira, and it was just his accent, but no, it's actually called Mira. That's a name brand, so maybe I should put a little copyright somewhere right there. Uh, yeah, he was really fun to teach with. He'd say, put your pencil on the paper. You're going to get a zero. That kind of stuff. Anyway, all right. So it does a lot of the same constructions as the compass and straight edge, but it's a lot faster. Uh, it's kind of like calculators in kindergarten. Once kids are good at um, multiplying and, and adding and that kind of thing on you know, by pencil and paper, then they kind of give them some shortcut technology tools. And this is one of those things. I don't know if you can see the uh, reflection going on in this picture. That's what I really have on the paper. And you look through this thing, and uh, you can see a reflection in this high tech piece of plastic and you can draw stuff back here that is what you're seeing and that kind of stuff. It's really fun for artwork and that kind of thing. Let me show you how it works. Um, there is a cut edge. This is the most important part. There's a cut edge right here. And you can really tell in this video, but when you have one, there, you, when you have one in your hands, you can really see. Uh, you're always supposed to look into the side that has the cut. And you're always supposed to put the cut edge down on the paper. And when you ever use it to draw a line, you draw along this little beveled cut. This cut is meant to be in the center. It lines up with the center of the plane of this reflective um, plane that we're going we're gonna to leave perpendicular to our paper. All right, so one of the most common uh, constructions you know we do is this bisecting a segment. And it's really easy with the mirror. Um, I just line up. I'm looking through the mirror to try to see this point that's on the real, the real paper. And I move my mirror until this point is reflected directly on that point over there like it is for me now, and then I just draw, oh, I'm going to draw a different color. There we go. So there's my perpendicular bisector. As easy as that. All right, angle bisector, almost as easy. Here's an angle. I want to bisect it. I'm just going to look through the mirror on the paper. Miss that guy. He's awesome. All right. Of course, I know this point is going to be on the angle bisector. So I just put my mirror down. I can kind of swivel it on there until I can see that the reflected line reflected line that I'm looking at is kind of superimposed through onto the paper line that I see over there. And then I can draw that angle bisector and done. Angle bisector. Easy as that. Alright, so what are we going to do in triangles? One thing we're going to do in triangles is we're going to make all three angle bisectors, or at least two angle bisectors, uh, of a triangle because they all intersect in one point and that point has some funky properties. Alright, so I'm going to do that again. Angle bisector over here that. Angle bisector over here. So about like that. Angle bisector over here I shouldn't have to test, but just in case you don't believe me. Look at that. Angle bisectors are right there. Uh, Alright, angle bisectors. This thing is called the in-center. Uh, and it has some very cool properties. I'm just going to write that down because uh, back to that later if I have time. All right, the next one we're going to do is perpendicular bisectors. And again, the perpendicular bisectors of each one of the sides um, should all line up and make the same, I should hit the same point, right? So I'm doing the perpendicular bisector there. Can you see that? It lines up so that I can see this corner of the triangle line up perfectly on that corner of the triangle. When I get there, whoops, I just moved it. When I see that, then bam, there's one of the perpendicular bisectors light in one area. Doing this again over here. Look at that. And the third perpendicular bisector should line up. Pretty close. I'm cheating slightly, but yeah, there you go. So those are three perpendicular bisectors. This thing has a this has a name also. This is called the circum center back to that in a minute, but man, compared to uh, compass and straight edge, this is really fast. Of course, when you get done with these, you notice there's no marks on here that show what I did with the mirror, so this makes it really hard to put on a test, but um, we can watch you do it, we can tell as teachers if you're doing it right or not. Alright, so the next one is um, the medians of each side. Median is another term that's new this chapter. Alright, median is the the segment that's going to connect a corner of the triangle 
to the midpoint of the opposite side. So it's not really an angle bisector, it's not a perpendicular bisector, um, but it uses perpendicular bisector to construct, right? Because to connect from here to here, I could just use a ruler as long as I knew where this midpoint was. We can find this root, this midpoint with the mira, just as if we're going to do perpendicular bisector. Oh, my phone's ringing. Just a second. All right, who's calling me on the phone? All right, so I'm looking at trying to get the midpoint. This re this point to reflect again onto that on the other side of that segment through there. Can you see that? It's a really long one. All right, and then uh, all I really need is that, just because I, I really just need to indicate the midpoint. And then the median, of course, is just going to connect that point, and, okay, can see this point to the opposite corner, something like that. So that's what a median is. On the test, we might say construct on median with a compass and straight edge. That doesn't take long. You do the football construction here. You got your midpoint. But this is about triangles. And this is about impressing you with mirror speed. So here we go. There's the other midpoint, and the last midpoint is around here. So, if I did all this right, these medians, guess what? Drum roll, please. Ooh. Ought to all connect in a point also. Not bad. Ooh, look at that. And the median has, sorry, the median, uh, of course, they're all going to connect to one point again. That thing is called, that point in the middle is called the centroid. We'll come back to that, because guess what? There's one more. Um, there's these things called altitudes. Altitude of a triangle is kind of like you think of it when you think of the word altitude. You kind of think of how high it is. Uh, if the triangle was sitting on this base and I wanted to measure how tall it was, I would measure a perpendicular height of this point straight down to the ground. If the triangle was sitting on this side and I wanted to measure the height of it, I would measure from this point straight down perpendicular to this side. So I'm looking for perpendiculars from each corner to each to each opposite side. Uh, with this particular triangle, all the angles are acute, so um, it's kind of it's kind of one way it can happen. Let's see that in a second. Anyway, to do this on the mirror, um, of course, mirror reflections is always about making per things perpendicular. It's going to show us perpendiculars. I know the altitude has to go through this point. I need to be perpendicular to that line. So guess what? I line this up so that this side of the triangle, when it continues into mirror land over here, it's laying right on top of the real side of the triangle. And that's it. I, at that point, I know it's perpendicular. So that's all there is to do. Uh, here we go. So perpendicular from a point to a line of the mirror is really easy. Again, I'm just going to line this up until I can see that the line in real life reflected goes on top of the uh, part behind the mirror over here. And i got one left. It's got to go through this point. I'm going to line this up so that it's on there. And this one, oh gosh, it's pretty darn good. Again, great. Altitudes, again, all meet in one point. And the altitudes meet in one point, and that's called the orso center. All right, so now we have all these centers. We have altitudes, we have ortho centers, we have in centers, angle bisectors, circumcenters, perpendicular bisectors, and medians and centroids. It's a lot of vocabulary. Um, and honestly, to make this video, I had to cheat. I had to look and see which one was which, so I didn't mess it up. Okay, let's see that in a second. Uh, you might ask, okay, what, what's this good for? Like, why? Well, you asked that a lot. But uh, what else can I do with centroids and circumcenters and all that stuff? Because we may actually ask a, a, a question about this. There are some physical properties. I can probably go vertical now because I don't use them here as much. Um, there's some physical properties. Oh, we get a shadow. Just a second. There's some physical properties associated with some of these. Um, and, you know, I've got like five or six minutes left, and I just like to talk about geometry. Um, this centroid has the property that if you had this triangle cut out of some uniformly thick material like sheet metal or cardboard or something, and you wanted to balance it on your finger, what you would do is you'd put your finger right on that centroid and balance it. Oh, kind of recycling paper. Uh, you'd, ba you'd balance it right underneath that centroid, and the thing would balance. That's what the centroid's for. Uh, the circumcenter uh, has, has a very interesting property. The point of the circumcenter if you measured the distance from that point to any one point, any corner of the triangle, they would always be the same. And that's the only point in the triangle that does that. So in one sense, it's also a center of the triangle. It is equidistant from all the corners of the triangle. More, um, I guess another application of that is if it's the same distance to all those corners, that means we could draw a circle that should go, if I did this right, drum roll please, if I did this right, there should be a circle that should go through all of those corners exactly. And we'll see how well I did. Oh, I'm a 
little off on my... See the cut off I was. I didn't stab exactly where I was. But you can see I'm close. Do this in Sketchpad, it's wicked perfect. perfect. Uh, next one, In Center. Um, in Center was made by the Angle Bisectors, of course. This has the property that it is equidistant. If you were to measure the perpendicular distance to each one of these sides, so the perpendicular distance is kind of here, there's a perpendicular distance to this side here, the perpendicular that's the same everywhere, and that's the only point in the triangle that does that. So it's also the center in, in the sense that it's the center of a circle that just goes perfectly lining up with all three of those sides. We're not going to get into really exactly how to construct that circle. Like how do I exactly find the correct radius that's going to hit that perfectly? But we can kind of eyeball it just to kind of prove it to you. And again, if you did this on Sketchpad, oh wait, that's what it is. If you did this on Sketchpad, it would be so perfect. Ooh, that's a little too big. If you did this on Sketchpad, it would be absolutely perfect. Okay, so the mystery one is the orthocenter. The orthocenter is the place where all the altitudes line up. This is, of course, the place where all you know, this is going on, and it's going through all the um, it's going all through all the corners. Orthocenter. Try to try to look at this up on Wikipedia, Google. It doesn't seem to be the center of really anything. There's no other thing I can draw like circles or balance points or anything that that seems to have to do with um, that we know. There's other centers that have other cool properties, like there's a point you can find in a triangle that minimizes the total distance to all the corners, and there's a point that minimizes the total distance to all the sides. So these aren't all the centers in existence. These are all the ones we're going to study because the uh, constructions are fairly straightforward. It's all about making perpendicular bisectors and angle bisectors, and that's it. And on the mirror, and with a compass and straight edge, those are things we've all done. Good luck. May the force be